Hey guys, you're listening to the Absorb Cast, and in this episode, we ask the question, does quality matter when it comes to your brand's content? So something we've seen in the creative industry, and we've seen it, we've heard this a while ago, and now we're seeing it more and more, is the people saying like, it doesn't have to be the best, just needs to be good enough. The quality of the video is good enough. My iPhone is good enough. Canva is good enough. Yeah. For, and I think, well, that's true and not. I think in some cases it could be true, in some cases not. When you say it's good enough, you're the person who's saying that's setting the standard. So what's good enough for somebody may not be good enough to somebody else. So it's it's kind of an opinion. It's and subjective. It is subjective. Yeah. And like where does it where does it come factual and where does it matter in content creation? So do you want to start talking about um, like Canva where that stands and good enough for yeah. design? Yeah. So let's let's talk about why why quality matters for brands overall. I think that's that's a good place to oh, start yeah. with design. Mm-hmm. You know, so your brand, like your your first of all, your business should have a brand, and we have another podcast on that. <laughs> We've too, covered so that already. That's yeah. that's a whole other thing. But you know, your brand reputation is something that like when people discover you on social media or they find your website or they want to learn more about your business, whatever it may be, your brand reputation is the first thing that they're going to come across. And if you are putting out a bunch of content on social media that is good enough all the time, that can be okay. But overall, when they look at your social media or they look at your website, if everything is good enough, is that what you want your brand's reputation Mm -hmm. to be like or do you want to be the stellar the highest quality like what at what point do you want to stand apart from other people because if everyone is doing what is good enough all the time then how are you going to be competitive in that field you know unless your service is completely stellar across you know everything else and that's where you're just blowing everyone out of the water but i think that is if you're trying to stay competitive, then, you know, having a good reputation is that's the edge that you mm-hmm. should be taking. But where that gets tricky is in bigger businesses, you know, there there are budgets involved and, and in smaller businesses, too. But in bigger businesses, you have approval logs, you have teams, you have people that are all dedicated towards these different things. And it's hard to jump through those hoops, you know. Um, so that's where you know having the higher quality like there's there's pros and cons in that Mm -hmm. area to get to that point um so design being one of those things canva is it's a good tool in some senses but if you are someone who is truly a a designer like with a design background you know graphic designer brand design whatever it may be Canva is not usually the go-to tool unless you have to create templates for people to use within your company that are not designers. Yeah. And I think it's exactly who it's targeted for is not designers. And that's not a bad thing because we we do need a tool Mm -hmm. like that. Like something like that has to exist. But at what point do you need to say, okay, I need an actual designer to create something custom for this thing? Yes. Yeah. And we, uh, we were just talking about, um, uh, it was Adobe Express. We were talking yeah. about that, and I use that when I can, when yeah. I need to. If uh, when it's when it does what I need, I know what I need to do, and I know its limitations. Um, but when I had you look at it, yeah, you there's limitations to what it where these tools are very user friendly. Would you say? Yeah, they're they're meant to be user meant friendly. to be user friendly, yeah. but so user friendly to where there's trade offs where. It's limited. It can't have complicated tools in it or it makes it complicated. Yeah. So there's some things like even I, I'm not even a designer or graphic designer, but sometimes I'm making thumbnails or something here yeah. and there. And there's little things that I, I even want to do in it. And it doesn't let you because it's just some, um, you, you had an example of something you're trying to do. It just, it just won't let you because if it did, that's, it opens up a whole nother world of tools that may confuse another user that it's something most, most people wouldn't be using it for. It's not what it's meant for. Yeah. So yeah. So like, if you want to do something, well, it's limited. So I guess would that be something where you'd bring someone in where you're trying to make something? I feel like I need to. I feel like I need a solid example of this on something well, you're trying to do. And- you know, well, well, one thing that I was trying to do just today actually was I had a graphic that I needed a um, in Adobe Express. Yeah, yeah, in Adobe Express. Um, I was trying to create like an arch graphic. So an arch is where it's like a rectangle on the bottom and the top half is curved like a half circle and 
I was trying to create this and Adobe Express has shapes that you can use. And so I, you know, put in one of those shapes and I was trying to make it bigger. I wanted it to span like across the graphic, but still have that like perfect circle rounded edge. And as you scaled the graphic up, it lost the rounded edge and it became more of like a rectangle with just rounded corners. So like it gained a flat edge on the top. And that's like, that's not what I needed, but there was no way for me to make like retain that shape you know? Yeah. And then it, I made it super complex on myself where I combined like a circle and a rectangle. And it's like, okay, if I'm going to this point, like I may as well be in illustrator using the pathfinder tools to like make yeah. my own shapes, you know, you hit limitations with it. Exactly. But if it does what you need to do and it's good enough, it's a yeah. great tool. If yeah. it's good enough, if it, if the tool can hit your standards, yes, but these tools do have low standards. They're great. Some of them. So, do. Yeah. Yes. But like yeah. they're great to do beginner things. Yeah. Canva's definitely expanded and done it more. It has, yeah. And, and um, I follow Canva's founder. Um, oh, the name is escaping me now, but maybe we can put it in the description. Um, I, I follow Canva's founder on LinkedIn, and it, it is interesting to see their purpose because the, the person that created Canva actually has a design background, and they knew that there was a gap in the market for mm -hmm. a tool like that. And so they have a lot of big ideas on how they want to expand it in the future and like who they, they know who the audience is for. And honestly, learning that about Canva made me gain a whole new respect for it because I, I really didn't like Canva at all being a designer, yeah. you know, um, but knowing that the person who founded it has that design background and knowing who their audience is, that they're actually reaching it. Like, I, I understand like now <laughs> you, you go into school and, and doing and doing this work and having years of experience and mm -hmm. then just. Somebody picks up Canva and they create, a, you know, some cool things, but then they think they're at your level. Yeah. It's kind of, it, it's, it's insulting. Well, that's not, it's not insulting, but that person well, saying that, you know, like acting that way can be insulting. Yeah. It, like. And that's where I can see where you're just kind of like getting aggravated with the software, but that. Yeah. That, I don't want to get into the whole AI stuff, but yeah. there's a whole thing with AI <laughs> yeah. we can talk about later on that. But, um, but yeah, like these tools. So I think these tools are great for Canva, not AI. We're talking yeah. Canva is something like Canva or Adobe Express. Those things are great to be to to be good enough. I don't want to keep saying that, but, yeah. just, but when you want to have full control and full capability and take it to another level, is that is it more about having full control over what you want to do of creating something, bringing something to life and vision, where you'd bring on a professional? Yeah, like it's it's more of having the endless possibilities yeah. and and being able to have that extra creative That's... edge. And so there's there's an interesting like segue or like separation I guess between like my design industry and your film industry because mm -hmm. In the design industry, when you're talking about quality, it's the designer that you hire. Like it, there are very few tools that you use in the design industry. And so your quality comes from the designer that you have working on the project. And like, I'll be the first to say, like, I don't have the best experience. Like I'm not the greatest designer, you know, but I know that I, my capabilities are higher than someone who, you know, maybe has no experience in design or someone who is, you know, entry, entry level. But I recognize that there are people that are more experienced than I am, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for me, if I had a project that I knew, hey, I need an, an extra creative edge or I need, you know, something more, I'm going to look for a designer that has more experience than me to work on it. But in the film industry, you have the issue of like you have hardware and software and skill level. Like you have yeah. all of these different things to consider. I never thought of that. Yeah, there's quality with, you know, just the you can start from the lens. Yeah, that's that's something interesting. And I think it makes it more difficult to hire someone, but it also makes it easier to get better quality because there's better hardware. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you could also ruin an image and software. It's it, it almost you almost need to have high quality at every step. Yeah, I mean not almost. You do. Well, I I have seen firsthand an issue of people having high quality gear, and because the person using it doesn't know how to mm -hmm. use it, then they produce. It's a low quality outcome. That's the thing know? all the time, especially in the film. You'll see people blow money on camera, like yeah. expensive cameras, and they don't know what to do with it, or they have no idea how to color grade, or they. It's same with audio stuff. They don't know how to work with it, or they'll. You know, I'm going to say this now. I see tons of people. This, I don't know if there's any other content creators or filmmakers out there, anybody who, in the audio world, I'm sure there's audio files out there that 
it makes me so mad to see someone using a dynamic microphone or where you know the pickup pattern is and they flip it like the other way or have it like sideways when it's not like that's not the pickup pattern on People know what I'm talking you, about. They do know. What you I'm are about. an audio nerd, though. Like that's. It, it <laughs> makes me so mad. I've seen it was a. It was like it wasn't ESPN, but some uh, sports thing, and I was watching a guy using one of the. Uh, it's Electro Voice. I don't know which model it was, but it's a dynamic microphone. It's got a pickup pattern like the pod mics we're using now. Right, in, it, it's like this, and he had it up sideways beside his face, and I'm like the pickup pattern. Sh- He's shooting the capsule like toward the ceiling. I'm like that's not how that works, but it's just it it. <laughs> And I get like there's a lot to learn, but I don't know. And it probably wasn't that guy's fault. Production, whoever set that up for him, probably just set it up. And so just I don't know. Anyways, what was it you just said you were talking about? You're talking about skill level. Oh yeah, how yeah. people can buy like expensive things and not know what to do with it. And it's interesting. It's so different in the marketing world out here, and like in the Midwest where we're at, compared to like Hollywood or New York, where the film industry is probably bigger. Yeah. Um. It's growing here, but I think it's growing differently. But out there, it's like you there's you'll hire DPs or production companies. People ask, you know, what are you shooting on, and ask about the camera yeah. codecs you're using. I have never been asked that anywhere about hired. No one, no one knows to ask that. People are usually some, surprised that when you show up with a cinema camera. I, don't, like, <laughs> I, I will never forget. Like most, the first time I heard it, and I hear it a lot. Like I was to be setting somebody up, and they'll be like, "Oh, next you're gonna have a, you're gonna boom a mic over my head, aren't you?" And I'm like, "Yeah. Oh. Like what else am I gonna do?" Do you have one of those drones too? One of those drones. And people that have no idea what a gimbal is, yeah. Which you know, I, I don't expect oh, that, but no. that's. In our market here yeah. in the Midwest, the expectations are very low. I love when people don't know what a gimbal is because it's so fun to like show them and yeah. talk about it. Um, but more, you see gimbals everywhere now. Yeah, that, everyone buys a gimbal for everything, and it's because that hardware is going to solve all their problems, right? Yeah, yeah. That's another thing, right there. It's like <laughs> people just buy those, and I've bought them and used them. They're they're a tool. I don't want to get into all this right now. We're talking about quality, but yeah. I, I talk about gear. I'm going to go on and on about it. So. <laughs> The quality when it comes to are we going to switch over to video now? Yeah, let's go talk for about video. It. So, yeah. the iPhone. Let's talk about the iPhone. Talk about hardware. The iPhone apparently is good enough. I don't know what I was thinking buying all these oh, yeah. cameras. Oh, no. Uh, no point in that. But this is an actual concern with some people, and this is like is the iPhone replacing the cinema cameras? I don't think it was, that's what's happening. But is the iPhone replacing the content creator that takes it professionally? That's a different conversation, I think. And I think that's what we're seeing a little bit of where um, real estate's a big one. A lot of realtors aren't hiring photographers and uh, videographers anymore, at least at certain levels in certain areas. It's not as big as it once was because the iPhone's good enough or whatever phone they may be, uh, typically the iPhone. And I I, I don't know if – I don't think it's going to be a growing problem. I think think it's – I think it's going to grow to a point where, well, I like your analogy of like, it will, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me start. <laughs> Everyone's shooting things on phones. We're used to seeing it. We're so used to that quality. Phones aren't bad. They're amazing, especially compared to what they used to be for content creation. And they also have the benefit of a social media manager to just be able to pull the phone out. And it's, you can take, you can take your photo, you can take your video, you can edit now on your phone, everything there. Mm-hmm. And phones can do some things better than editing software like well one that blows my mind is like um and adobe can kind of attempt to do this and i think davinci maybe but the the uh auto the auto masking like the hmm. the green screen effect is what people probably know yeah. the, about where it cuts you out puts you on the background how quickly it can do that on phones on yeah. phones and that's yeah. amazing so like there's there's advantages to the phone trade-offs of quality but i, I think that's a separate type of content you see it everywhere everyone's used to seeing it and a lot of content creators aren't getting hired as much because of the whole, this quality is good enough. And that's what we've heard people say that a few times why we keep saying it's good enough. Cause that seems to be the, the thing yeah. is, well, it's good enough, but to what point is that detrimental? And what I think, th- I think what we're going to see in the industry is everyone's, everyone's already got the same tools and they're doing the same thing. And yeah. then there's going to be a rise of all that. And it, People are going to want to start standing out and being different and being competitive. Now I want to bring up your analogy of what you said about, <laughs> would you say like pasta boxes? Oh, about, yes. Yeah. So we, first of all, we got to be careful talking about groceries because <laughs> I put a short up out of our, our um, last episode and it was out and I accidentally uploaded a piece of it. And it was out of context. 
There's some awful comments about a cracker box. <laughs> <What are> you, <laughs> it was we, terrible. We use an analogy about a grocery store, which... So yeah. the the last podcast was about um, hourly versus project-based pricing, yeah. and we used an analogy about people, you know, they don't ask about prices whenever they go to a grocery store, but everyone, like... We should have used a different product, like, yes. like an iPhone or something. But, yeah, but the point, was, but the point wasn't that... Okay, I don't want to go on this is a, it's watch a the whole, whole thing. Watch the whole episode and let's see what we're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, back to everyone using the phone, everyone's content looking the same. I think what you're going to see is everybody's good enough, everyone's social media manager, the one-man band doing it all, yeah. or woman, doing it all. So, is, oh, go ahead. No, no, what were you say? I was going to carry on about the pasta. Yeah, go ahead. That's what I was going to say. Okay, so... The, the analogy, Austin and I were talking, you know, off the air before we started recording about this. We had the analogy that in a grocery store, and I'm hesitant to bring this up because <laughs> last time we talked about grocery Go stores, on. we got so much. Anyway, in a grocery store, you know, you think about when you're in any aisle, like the pasta aisle, canned foods, whatever it may be, everything starts to look the same after you look at it for a while, you mm-hmm. know, like you, whenever you walk into the pasta aisle, whatever, you know that there's a bunch of pastas, all the boxes kind of look the same and you have to read, you have to know what is going to stand out. And so in the grocery industry, when brands needed to get competitive with each other, they started changing their labels. They yeah. changed their boxes, their products. And what were you going to say? I was like, maybe not just the grocery industry, but any front facing product industry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was anything, but in, I'm using the grocery store because it's the classic example of like, you can see firsthand comparison yeah. of, of these things. Mm-hmm. And so brands started getting more competitive with what they were putting on their boxes, on their products. What, what was their product going to look like? What was going to make them stand out? And so we had this like mass influx just historically of brands trying to cram so much information on the box because that's what the people needed to know how good their product was. Well, then, you know, somewhere at some point in the 21st century, relatively recently, brands started realizing, wait, everyone's cramming all this information here. Let's simplify it. And then those are the brands that are now standing out. And that minimalist look is the Mm -hmm. one that stands out across everybody else. We can start to see the same thing in social media. Yeah. You know, so when social media was first coming around, everyone was posting like personal things, you know, and it was all horrible quality because it was all just from your phone. People weren't using their cameras, you know, to upload to social media. Well, then there was a spike where people, you know, photographers or, you know, brand people, like anything like that, they were taking the extra step to get higher quality. And those are the brands that were really standing out mm-hmm. on social media and, you know, on their websites and, and places like that. Well, then phones kind of caught up with that. And now phones are able to somewhat compete to that higher quality. And so now it's easier and the bar is getting set higher. Yeah. So that now makes everything good enough. And that's yeah. the problem that we're seeing. Yeah, because everything is great. But there's still, there's people like us, there's production companies out there, there's passionate people in content creation who can go above and beyond your iPhone. Yeah. And well, I think, I didn't finish my point, but the industry is going to be good enough for now. And then people, or maybe I did, I don't know if I said this, but it's going to get good enough and then it's going to get competitive. Yes. And then I think there's going to be an influx of higher quality content. Phones will get better. Things will get better. But I don't think it's, 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 I think things will get better to where people want more control. Yeah. And I don't think, and I don't want to get all nerdy into the text, but a phone will never, ever have the look that a cinema camera has. A, a no. full frame sensor, even an APS-C or a micro four thirds, unless the sensor is massive in the phone. There's, there's a limitation to the actual physical size of the phone yeah. and it won't get there. And battery life and space. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of limitations mm-hmm. there that the phone industry will have to figure out another solution for in order to keep up with cameras. Then I think they but, will. I think they will eventually, yeah. But we've seen the same trend over multiple industries. That's that's why I brought up mm-hmm. the grocery store example. We see it in the tech industry, and yeah. now we're going to start seeing it in digital marketing. You know, we've we've already hit that point where everything is good enough. You know, yeah. so the next spike is what what are people going to start doing to make their quality mm-hmm. stand out? They got to push for higher quality. And so there are places where the phone that phone content, the selfie front facing, you know, yeah. brand person talking does have a place because it yeah. does feel more personal yeah. and lower quality. But it, I think that's that's getting in touch with your current people that mm-hmm. already follow you. But to catch attention and bring new people in, I think you got to do something yeah. different. I mean, that's all marketing advertising, you know, trying to stand out amongst everyone. And what is that now? 
Yeah. Well, if everyone's using the same freaking camera and the same editing techniques and this, everything looks the same. Yeah. But I mean, to the point that I was making earlier too, you know, if all of these brands are now saying, oh gosh, like we have to be way higher quality. We have to put so much more money into digital marketing just on a daily basis in order to build a following, have our brand awareness, and now really impress people mm -hmm. on social media. Like those, that is big budget spending that they got to start accounting for. So at what point should brands start to say, okay, we need to step it up? Or, you know, how do they start to decide what qual or what content is worth having a higher quality and when should they say, okay, this is good enough? Well, I can only speak really for the video side on this is, well, I think if, if what you're doing is working, it's working, right? If yeah. you're bringing in more people, why spend more money unless it's actually going to work? Now, I think if you're, if you want to be taken serious though, and there's there's something to the quality when you land on someone's video and they took the time to light it. Sounds good. It looks great. It doesn't look like it was shot on a phone, and you people can tell if it's not shot on a phone. I know it's getting harder and harder nowadays to tell, but there's there's something subconscious where the quality is like a step up, or it looks like a scene from an actual TV commercial that mm -hmm. we still see on, you know who, well, uh, they are running some phone commercials too. Yeah. I've seen that before, but um, your people will. People take your brand more serious and take your message more serious where, you know, if, I've, if I'm a, um, I'm just trying to think of what's a generic contracting job around here, um, a car, car detailer. Yeah. I'm a car detailer and I just pull my phone out and I'm like, hey, I'll come clean your car or this <laughs> and I have like big text or something and trendy music under it, whatever. Like, is that going to get anyone's attention around here? But say I'm, it starts off with a drone shot of her fancy car. The guy pulls up. It's clean. He gets out. There's all these cuts like a movie. And then he's like walking and talking because he's like that person's lobbed up and it sounds good. It's not all scratchy and stuff. And there's like some gimbal shots moving, some multi cuts like that. You're not going to do all that on a phone yeah. and, and you're going to need someone to do that. Um, something something I wanted, I wanted to say too when you were talking about um, – what were you talking about? It made me think of this, this idea I wanted to talk – I mentioned before I forget – it's interesting that these companies are opening social media jobs and content creation jobs now. Yes. Like there's construction companies now are opening content creation positions. And it's like this this field is growing yes. for people to, who work, whether they're just editors. Or, well, they're, they're wanting everything. And that's what we talked about in a later episode. Like everybody yeah. wants every, that one person to do everything. But I think what's going to happen is those departments are going to be way more important. They're going to start growing and almost like – Every company is going to have their own mini production company. I think yes. is what's going to happen. Yeah. That's what I think is going to – I think phones are going to take over. Phones are opening the door to this is what I think is happening. Because now, yeah. say the air conditioning, heating company or whatever locally has people shooting on phones or crappy cameras. But then one company has a budget to hire in two or three people to run a production team. And they shoot mm -hmm. high-quality content. And that's what they do seven or seven days a week, five days a week, whatever. Yeah. And they're pumping out high quality ads every mm -hmm. week that's going to stand out so much more your quality to be like well going back to like your brand imagine like a poorly everyone knows what a poorly looking graphic looks like mm -hmm. imagine like the, i always think of like the end of a paid commercial yes. the product <laughs> flash let's always think of that but then think of like a well-polished ad you've seen i don't know what's a good example of like like a graphic i'm just trying to think I've of like a sales graphic I've, I've never seen a, literally anything i've know. never seen a good paid commercial <laughs> anyways well, there's there's something subconsciously you you know they take their product serious mm -hmm. or their service serious because they invested in just the look of their ad. Yes, it feels sloppy just to always throw a phone up all the time. Yeah, and it looks like you don't care. I mean, it feels like you're doing it because you feel like you have to because everyone else is doing it, not because you care. This is this is something I would be really interested to see is in the marketing realm. You know, these these social media jobs are really starting to pop up and historically, when companies start to build out internal marketing teams, when they really get to that point, because that's that's usually not the first point for mm -hmm. companies, but when companies start to build out these internal marketing teams, they usually start with a marketing director. You know, That marketing director would say, okay, I need a creative team, social team, web team. Like these are, those are the three sort of main areas that they need for, for digital marketing. Um, paid media is a, a whole other industry within that too. But on the creative side of things, because this is a creative podcast, um, they would usually start with social media, 
well, then that social media person is expected to wear all these hats mm-hmm. for content creation. So then that's going to spiral into, I need a designer. I need a phone that can take good photos is usually what the answer is for the photography end of it. But video is always the last thing because it is historically known to be so high budget. I'm curious if in the near future, we're going to start seeing a reverse effect where companies will start bringing in a marketing person, social media person, and then hire a an internal production team. I think so. Because yeah. like these companies used to go to bigger production companies. Yeah. Around, and they're around. Mm-hmm. But because of the whole social media, I think what's happening is these production, there's more people doing video than ever before now. Everyone mm-hmm. can, it's, it's just, the tools have gotten way more affordable. They've gotten better. The education out there is what's, that's yeah. what's doing it. And Anyone, it's, it's accessible. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a better way. Everything's accessible. And why would you spend twenty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a production company to do a commercial for you when you can hire, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out. Let's say you're paying two people $60,000, $120,000 a year and have Mm -hmm. these commercials made in house monthly. (laughs) Like, yeah, in house. And it's, it's, it's such a better, smarter investment in that way. But I don't think, and I think that's only going to create more opportunities for people wanting to do that because it's not like, and I've seen this, people like will buy, you know, the social media manager. Well, let's get her, get them a good camera. That's like, that's that whole mindset of the to... hardware yeah, uh-huh. isn't going to do it. It's not. You do need people in the creative field. You do need people who are passionate that love it. And I think it's a good thing for people doing video or, well, I don't want to say photography. Photography is another world too. Yeah. But is. I do think you, you could do both. I think so. I think, I yeah. think photography is a really good skill to have alongside video. I think so. And usually you have it. Yeah. It's good enough. But you can compose it. Well, that's okay. That That's kind of contradicting everything okay. we've just said. When I say good enough, I mean like you're a video person. You're, I'm pretty sure you know how to light, compose, and you're familiar with camera settings. Yeah. You can pull a frame or take a photo. Uh, most photographers that we've seen, at least family photographers anyway, natural lighting is the big thing right now. So mm-hmm. it used to be that you know people would everyone would go to a studio to get their family photos and things done like having natural light photographers was not a thing you know 30 some years ago and now that is like that's so accessible and it's harder to find a photographer that has a studio and can do the like traditional on a backdrop or you know whatever and so it's interesting that you you immediately went to lighting because like i i am a photographer and i don't know hardly anything about lighting you know and so automatically i mean i think that's why you and i make a great team whenever we create content too is because you know everything about lighting and so say everything well but i mean you know you know how to make an image look good in a studio environment and and in other environments i mean we're not in a studio right now we're in an office that is interesting that could be a whole I'd like to have a discussion on that. Like what why why can't a photo look decent? There I think there's a lot of things to talk about that. Why can a photo look better than a natural lit day lit photo can look better than a natural lit video from that? Yeah. From the cam- same camera. Like it just you got bit rates and codecs that go into that and you got raw photos yeah. you take, but that's a, that's a whole yeah. other topic. But lighting, but, lighting yeah. paints an image too. So like you can paint the mood and the vibe. And yeah. All that. Yeah. But, uh, well, I feel like I derailed us a while back on something. I don't know. I think we, we stayed pretty on topic. So, um, <laughs> what, like what can quality do for somebody? I think I it, it makes your brand look so much better mm-hmm. is the thing, you know, and, and that goes back to our very first point is brand reputation is a very real thing and it will convert to more customers. You will have more conversions. You will have more sales if your brand has a solid reputation to yeah. go behind it. Reputation can also come from, you know, customer service, quality of your your sales, things like that. But your sale isn't going to happen until someone is convinced that they should buy from you. And the best way to do that is through digital marketing and your digital reputation. Yes. And I do want to, I almost, I think a lot of people's mindset is there's a diminishing return. And I don't know exactly where that comes from because I think a lot of these companies, whatever, are scared to invest in it. And they justify it by saying it's good enough. I think so. I think that's where, I think that's what it is. Like, let's just buy them an iPhone and hire a social media manager 
instead of spending more and hiring a couple people to do bigger things or contracting an agency or someone else yeah. that can do quality stuff, which that's a whole other thing. I'm like trying to find those people. Yeah. But those people are they're coming up everywhere. Yeah, and it's not necessarily wrong to hire, you know, an internal team to manage your social no. media. Because, I mean, no, I the, think the, sh- yeah. Yeah, the most important thing is to stay consistent on social media. Mm-hmm. Like, that is number one, even above quality. But very, very close second is quality. You know, if you're consistently posting bad content, that's not yeah, going to yeah. look good for your brand yeah, focus, either. You consistency know? <laughs> should definitely be the first stage. Yes, and then look at once you get once you got that down, yeah. Then start looking at the quality. It's like consistency is number one, and quality is like one and a half. And I think it's like yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think it is safer to contract out your production work yes. in that way because of that. Which uh, we have subscription models here at Absorb mm. Productions, which is the whole reason we base this off of, and it it works for everyone in that yeah. way. But it's safer, and it's it's safer and more affordable. And instead of going to a giant production company. You can kind of scale with what you need and how your what your needs are quarter to quarter mm-hmm. or year to year, month to month, whatever it is. Yeah. And we can still do the one off large productions mm-hmm. as well. And you still got that. And I think it's always good to build those relationship with an an ex I think it's good to have a relationship with another company. Yes. Before because before, then you can kind of hire another company, learn from them on what you need to build inside your business. That I think would be a good idea. Yeah, I think so. That's what I'd do. You hire Not the to pl- sell our own services or anything, but like, no. I think we're on the right track here. Well, so, I mean, <laughs> hire the plumber, watch how they do it. <laughs> but, but still, it takes it takes it takes passion. Yeah, you know, no one's gonna just steal what you can do. You can no. watch. I can explain to everybody exactly every detail how to do. Okay, you have explained to me multiple times exactly every detail on how you do it, and I'm not passionate about well, video production at all. Exactly, and it can be I'm, something super simple, and it's just it takes people. It takes a passion of whoever's doing it. And I think those are the right people to hire. Like I have, I've worked with you on set before and I 100% can guarantee that I can never replicate what you do. I would never know? be able to replicate any designs you do. Because so, so. we're both passionate about different things. Yeah, so. that's that's where I, I don't think that <laughs> the whole, everybody wearing multiple hats yeah. doesn't work. You can't be passionate about all of it. Well, maybe you can. There's a passion to skill ratio. Yeah, <laughs> passion to skill. Well, if you're expected to wear all these different hats, quality is going to suffer somewhere. Mm-hmm. I think you're uh, somewhere along the lines. You were talking about something, and then you brought up the triangle. That was it: good, fast, cheap. Yes. Sorry. Yep. I think that also goes with uh, quality. I think so. With yeah. Like, well, you're well t- that's that's where good is. Yeah. Like investing in your quality in that way. Yeah. Where yeah, I might having good and fast isn't cheap to invest in, but mm-hmm. your turnaround or your your uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Return on investment on that. Yes. It's probably going to be significantly better than yeah. cheap and fast. Yes. Or, Especially yeah. if you're creating evergreen content too. Cheap and fast. That's that's what I was trying to get. Cheap and fast is not like an option when you're looking for you know, hiring. I was saying like yeah. that's what people are – they're hiring in and, ex, and ex, that's what they're getting. Yeah. They're getting cheap and fast. <laughs> <laughs> Very roundabout way to Which get to that point. Which <laughs> is, I quote, good enough. Yes. Cheap and fast. That's it. That's cheap and fast is good enough. Cheap and fast is good enough. That's it. And it's that's not not true. always the right answer. I honestly would say for the most part that's not true. And I I do think it is the fear of investment on these companies because it's well like we were saying these these are new positions in companies that aren't used to this. They're not they're completely new to content creation. Mm-hmm. They might be just dipping into social media for the first time. It's it's scary. It's a whole nother expense to your company. But it is. Yeah. It's almost a necessity. But, it's an, and it's it's almost ironic in that, you know, people, if they are afraid to invest in quality, that's where the return on investment is. Yeah. You know, so it, it's pretty ironic in that case. But I, I think your point of cheap and fasting is good enough is a pretty good summary of this episode. I here. think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this one. We'll talk to you guys in the next one.